Hello, welcome to my channel, Moretta Threads. In today's tutorial, I am showing you how to make this top with just one machine. If you already know how to sew and you have both sewing machines, which is an overlocker serger and then this, then that's absolutely fine. I have step-by-step -step instructions which employ the use of both machines and have visual instructions and written instructions for you. However, if you're in the camp of you're getting into sewing, you're a beginner, and you only have access to one, I'm going to show you how we make this entire top with just one machine and also how we're going to make slight modifications to our sewing pattern so that it goes through the lace really nicely. You might have the problem with some lace of it getting stuck in this little bit here. If you see here, that section there, that's called your feed dogs. And if your lace or materials get stuck in there, there are ways that we can avoid that. And I will show you in this tutorial. So let's get into it. To begin, print page one and use the measuring box to measure one centimeter or one inch. If that's correct, you can then print the remaining pages and then grab them all together and put them in a nice neat stack, making sure they're perfectly leveled over each other. You'll then remove the right hand border and the bottom hand border. You're then going to place that stack upside down to the side, grab some tape and grab page one and page two. You'll notice that we did not remove the border on the left hand side and the top. That is because if you accidentally cut away too much or too little, you have a buffer tolerance here to work within. So just make sure that those little arrows connect to create an X and then grab a little tab of sticky tape and pop that on both the top and bottom X. And you're just going to repeat that process doing one page at a time with the little tabs and once you have done that then you can go in with the longer lengths of tape adjoining all the pages together make sure you do this after you've done the small tabs so that you can course correct if you need to I'm then going to grab my two highlighters and the reason why I'm using two highlighters is because if you are using a zigzag stitch you need to add in a little bit extra seam allowance because if you do a very narrow edge, it's going to get jammed in the feed dogs of your sewing machine. So if you add an extra one centimeter, it makes it much easier for you to make this project. So orange indicates the areas that we are going to add one centimeter and pink is just normal and we're going to leave it as is and just use these highlighters to highlight the size that you want to do. I generally would do a size small for myself, but here I am highlighting a medium size top because I know that the fabric that I'm working with has a little less stretch than most stretch lace fabrics generally do. You'll also see just there that I made a mistake and that is why it's important that you highlight and do this step because when it comes to cutting, you're going to miss steps and make a small mistake and you'll have to recut things and waste fabric. So really just highlight and map this out so that when it comes down to crunch time, you're as clear as you can be. And this is what it will look like. So orange, we add one centimeter and pink is normal. So once you've done that, you can just cut out your sewing pattern. So to begin, I am going to start with the main body of the top. So grab your lace out and I want you to fold it twice because you need two layers of this sewing pattern. So I'm just getting an idea of how much I need and we are cutting two layers on the fold. So place your sewing pattern on top, pop some pins in. Now remembering that orange means we're adding one centimeter, I am going to just by eye cut that layer out and visually make sure it's about one centimeter seam allowance. You may have seen people do a little sewing hacks where they add magnets onto their scissors that measure out one centimeter perfectly, which is an option. So with the bottom segment of both the front and back done, now we can cut out the top segments for both the front and the back. Both of these are cut out on the fold and you only need one layer of each. Same thing here again, we're adding one centimeter to the orange areas and pink is normal. Do you have the straps for the top, which is very straightforward. It's entirely pink, so we can just cut out the entire perimeter of this sewing pattern and you will be left with two straps here. 
With everything cut out, we can now move on to the sewing segment of this tutorial. So I recommend beginning with the top segment of the front of the top. I have it folded here still, and I'm just popping two pins in at the top and at the bottom, and it's worth actually putting one in the middle as well, because this shows the center front of the top. You're then going to grab some elastic as well, and that is going to be used for the shirring of that top. So flip that over and make sure that we are working with the wrong side of the fabric. I am getting that elastic and I am beginning it at the middle at the, of the top. Uh, and I actually recommend having a little bit more elastic to pull through as you go. So pop your foot down and then either use the manual thing on the side or if you have a button, you can use the button and pop the needle down to secure this into place. You'll also see here that I'm adding a pin in the middle so that I have a really nice guideline, making sure that this elastic goes in nice and straight. So with that foot and needle both down, you're going to grab the elastic at the back, then grab the elastic at the front, pull it taut and make sure that you are using those needles or pins that we've placed as markers to keep it nice and straight so that we're definitely going down the center front of the top. I'm just doing a straight stitch here. I'm doing this in two segments. Now that I've gone down to the middle of the top, I'm just readjusting things. And now I am pulling it and going in for a second go following that line of where the second needle is. With that center ruche detail now complete, you're just going to cut away that excess elastic. And we're going to now pin together the top segments for both the front and back together. Make sure when you pin them together, good sides are facing each other so that we sew on the bad side. With that done, we're now going to attach these together with a zigzag stitch. However, before we do that, it's important that you get some scrap pieces of your fabric to get an idea of what tensions are going to work best for the fabric that you have. So I'm just playing around here with a zigzag stitch, trying to get a look of what works best for this. I did two goes and I decided that I actually just liked the first one. So I just reverted back to the first stitch that I trialed. I'll also explain here as to why we added that one centimeter seam allowance onto the orange areas. So if you had not added that seam allowance, this is where you would currently be sewing really close to the feed dogs right underneath the foot of the machine what is likely to happen in most machines is that it'll get jammed and stuck in those feed dogs that didn't happen with this luckily but the result was still quite warped however if you add that one seam allowance you will see you'll have a little bit of excess fabric sticking out right here which is perfect that's what you need when sewing with a lace fabric it's just enough to pull through that it won't get stuck in those feed dogs your fabric won't get wrecked and it's easier to just pull it through and then the finished result is a really nice flat finish no warping so now that I have sampled my settings and I know that I am happy with how it works with this fabric, I'm ready to join the top and bottom segments together for both the front and the back. So when you begin, place the foot down and then once you place the foot down, you can remove the pin. It'll just keep your fabric in place. And as you sew, just do your best to make sure just a little bit of fabric is poking out to the right of your sewing foot and go slow. And with the front of the top done, just repeat that process again now for the back of the top. Now this step is optional, but if you would like, you can remove a little bit of excess of that seam allowance if you would like to do that for aesthetics. You're then gonna lay out the front and back of the top, good sides facing each other and pop some pins down the side. So just repeat the same process as before, pop your fabric under, place the foot down and then remove the pin and just do that zigzag stitch along the length of the side. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the top. So start a little bit, remove that pin and as we get down to this little seam here, You'll see that the seam, I made sure the top is facing down. So I'm just gonna make sure that the join is exactly the same on this side. So I'm just ensuring that that top seam is facing towards me as I sew and the underlayer is facing away from me. 
So after you have zigzag stitched the side seams closed on both sides of the top, you can then remove the excess little bit of fabric if you like, but that's optional. With the main body of the top now complete, we can now begin hemming the top. So just for reference, the hem allowance for this entire sewing pattern is two centimeters. So just grab your ruler, find that two centimeter mark and pop a pin in, and then just repeat that process for the entire perimeter of the bottom of the top. And then just repeat this for the back of the top and the underarms. You'll just notice here that you've pinned essentially everything except for that very top of the neckline. Now I haven't changed my settings here. They are the same zigzag stitch that I have been using throughout and the process is pretty self-explanatory. For the bottom of the top, just zigzag stitch over the entire perimeter with that little edge of fabric popping out on the right side. Now I will say that when you are doing a zigzag stitch or even just a straight stitch on a straight piece of fabric, it is very easy. However, you'll notice here underneath the top where the underarm sits, it is a curved piece. You'll have to just do your best to manipulate the fabric because obviously when you fold it under, it's not being folded under perfectly because it's a curved edge. So as long as the top point is two centimeters and the bit where that little seam connects is two centimeters, you can just manipulate from that top to bottom section and you'll be able to maneuver it. With the back and side seams hemmed, we can now hem the very top of our top. So do the same thing again, two centimeter seam allowance, and then just zigzag stitch that hem down. When you do this, make sure at the start and at the end, you are finishing this bit off with a back stitch. Moving on to the straps of the top, this is not unlike everything that we have been doing throughout. So make sure that good side of the fabric is facing down when you are pinning this. Two centimeter seam allowance, or sorry, hem allowance, and just pop that through as usual. So once you have done both lengths, turn your stitch settings onto a straight stitch and make the stitch length as long as possible on both of these ends. Try to make the tail of these quite long so that you can have lots of thread to work with because we're just going to pull these in for that ruche effect. I am only ruching in the front and I'm going to have the back normal. However, you can have both the front and back ruched if you would like. So once you have popped in those pins to attach the front to the straps, you're just going to do the same process as usual. Make sure that you do a back stitch at the beginning at the end of this. You'll also might find that you have difficulty sewing this through because of that bulking that we're now working with. So if you need to just grab those tails at the back and use them as something to hold on to, to pull that through as you are back stitching. So with the front straps attached, we're now going to attach the back. So get those two side seams, pinch them together, and that'll help you locate the center back. From the center back, you are going to put in markers seven centimeters away. And that is your reference point of where we will attach our straps. So just pop some pins in to secure that and then take that back across to the sewing machine and secure them down with a zigzag. The final step is then to grab some ribbon that you like and measure out two 30 centimeter lengths. From there, do a double knot and then tie your bow. You can also sew these down into place if you like, but I'm lazy, so I didn't. Then just trim away the excess, cut them on an angle like me if you want, but you can cut them straight. And the reason for that is because you're going to seal them anyway with a lighter to stop those edges from fraying. A cute idea could also be to do a smaller, thinner bow in the center ruche detail of the top. But other than that, this is what your top should look like. So this is what you should be left with. That is the end of the tutorial. I hope that was helpful. If you have any feedback or questions, please leave it below. Please also subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get notifications as I offer 20% off discount codes for the first 48 hours when I drop new videos. Outside of that, good luck with your sewing project and happy sewing.